Hey, what's going on guys? Tony here, CCXRC. Welcome to the channel. Uh, it's a little different today because I'm down in my basement because we've had so much snow outside. I'm just not willing to make it up to the studio out there to record. But I have information that I think you guys want about the new Furitech products for uh, the SCX24 based mini monster trucks. And uh, I've actually got one of them here. Uh, that's in a prototype truck that they sent me to test out. And so I have some footage of it running that we're going to look at today. Oh, cleared it. Whoa. So this is really cool. There's a lot of different people that are making SCX24 based monster trucks right now. And that's awesome. We've been building, I've got the ECB 3D printing one here. Um, I've got the uh, Southwest Monster Shops Tiny Titan here, which is actually, I think, one of the best looking chassis. It's carbon fiber, uh, but what it has that makes it neat is they did like a 3D cage at the top of it there that kind of sticks out and just gives it that look even a little bit more. They all handle really great, you guys. They all have different things that I like about each one in the handling. And then this is the MoFo RC one. I kind of like how uh, low this one seems slung. Um, as far as the, the top of it and all that, it just has a really low profile to it. Um, but yeah, they're all really good in their own right and they're all fun. We'll talk about some of the things that I have in each of these in a minute as we talk about what I really am excited about with this FureTech Godzilla brushless motor and their Rocket Man uh, transmission. Um, so they sell it as a combo. You can either buy the motor by itself if you want. I say the way to do it is just get the combo. The combo has a metal transmission. It's aluminum um, CNC cut, and then it's got metal gears in it as well. But it also has a um, CNC aluminum motor plate that gets the motor up into the front side of that transmission, which is going to allow it to fit into these chassis a lot better. The problem that we've been having and people are having when they're putting in some of the bigger ones into the chassis the way they're set up and the transmissions the way they're set up is that the motor then hits this and they're cutting up the chassis. I've seen that one cut up. I've seen this bar cut out of um, the ECB ones. I've got it hidden a little bit that bar uh, by the... Uh, um, the collected pipes there and so that's one of the problems that we're running into and I, I know that Ernie's been working on a motor mount for the rocket surpass to get it up and out of the way as well um, but right here FureTech has a whole solution motor pinion um, and spur gear the motor mount and the transmission um, you can get that whole setup for $110. Now, here's the thing. When you go with these brushless ones, no matter which one you go with, um, we have it even in these ones, is you need a ESC that can handle brushless. And so in this one, I'm running the FureTech Lizard with the Bluetooth module because we had to be able to reverse the motor directions in these. So you needed that Bluetooth module to go into the app and reverse the motor. Uh, you could also pop pins and change the wire two wires around if you wanted to do it that way i found bluetooth to be easiest and i feel like it also gives it some freewheeling i don't know exactly all the things but my worm gear doesn't hang up as bad as some people say that it does where it's instant stop mine actually rolls out a little bit um but let's talk about the motor performance what i think about it so far overall guys i'm really impressed with it uh, some people may say they want more speed. It's a 4,000 kV, but it's a 2030 size motor. It's one of the bigger ones that I've seen people cramming into these mini monster trucks. Um, I don't know the size exactly of the rocket, but I can tell you that I have the rockets and this is substantially bigger than the rocket. Um, so you'll be surprised when you actually get this in the, in the mail if you order one. Um, it is... Uh, it comes with the 12 tooth pinion on it and they're 0.5 mod gears, I guess is how it would be, uh, 0.5 M. Basically the same type of or size gear that you can get, uh, from hot racing is like a hop up. It's just easier to set mesh. A lot of things are easier about it, guys. And so I'm glad that they chose to do that. Um, that is one win. Uh, metal pinion, metal spur gear as well, um, that fit onto the Godzilla motor. Again, 4,000 kV. 
<laughs> the motor is able to handle 3S, guys. I have not run it on 3S. Uh, you need to have an ESC that can handle 3S, first of all. Um, I do have 3S batteries that I got from Mofo RC, uh, so I'm ready to test it out. But I'll tell you what, on 2S, this thing is already really quick, especially indoors. You run out of real estate really fast with it. All right, this thing is super fast. I'm going to try and get it ready to start and see if we can get it full speed. There. Go back. I really want to, wouldn't want it much faster than this for this size. You start breaking things. You crash. Not to mention it's hard to control. Ugh. Um, I, I almost feel like I'm not hitting full throttle most of the time indoors, especially when I'm down here in the basement and we're running around and hitting jumps and all that. I'm kind of just burping the throttle a little bit and um, just giving it little blips here and there and then kind of giving it a longer pull when I hit a jump to get a little bit more speed. Uh, but it's quick, that is for oh, yeah. sure. Um, 4,000 kV on 2S, but the larger size, it, it's pretty good, I would say, um, as far as the amount of power that you need. Some people always want more power, I get it. Um, but it gets kind of hard to control, it gets squirrely, it pulls. Uh, you're running such a small, short wheelbase with these things that it can turn really quickly and get just out of control. Um, they do donuts, they do all kinds of tricks. Uh, you can backflip them. Uh, I've done a backflip and had a moonwalk. You can do just from a standstill, do wheelie. And almost, you know, you just roll over because it's so much power. From power, you can stop and get enough um, brake power to do a stoppy. Um, We've done some bicycles with it, a whole bunch of different things, and um, really, really handles good. With the ESC, uh, they're changing and they're still working on firmwares for it and how it all works. Uh, and they updated, I, I've already updated some of my um, FureTech lizards already, uh, and they give you different things. And so I have it in crawler mode, but I have rollout set basically, or the FOC, which when I release, it doesn't make it just quickly stop. It, it allows it to kind of um, almost act like you're slowly letting off. And so it gives a little bit of uh, rollout by programming, I guess. Anyway, um, it runs simple because it's a three pin male JST dash PH plug. Plugs right into the board. You don't have to do any soldering guys. Basically it's the same plug that's in the SCX24 motors and you just plug it into the board. Um, I don't think you can plug it into the, the stock ESC uh, because it's not a brushless ESC. Um, so you'll have to look into something. I recommend the PureTech uh, Lizard Pro. Uh, again, that ESC should let you run 3S if you really, really, really want to. Um, I don't think that it's necessary. It's already, if you pull full throttle, it's just on its back. It's on its it just rolls over. So uh, wheelies over, not rolls over. It's just so much power that you slide across the ground. Um, and uh, build quality looks really good. The metal, I think, is, you know, cut really well. Looks good in there. I mean, I can show you guys a little bit, I guess, in here. You can see it in there. It's a good size motor. You know, some people might come out with a bigger size, 6,000 kV, whatever, and just, you know, really push the power. But the nice thing about where they've set this is you have a good amount of torque and you got a great amount of speed as well. And it runs pretty cool. Mine has not ever been even remotely close to hot to the touch after I've been down here running it uh, for a good bit. The other thing is the more speed you get, guys, the more parts you're going to break, the more upgrades you need. I really feel like with this now, you can probably, if you really, really wanted to, you could get away with getting a chassis getting wheels and tires, getting this kit, and then getting shocks. I would leave, you know, some of the other plastic parts. doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, I'm already running plastic on this one here. You know, links. You could do the plastic axles if you wanted. You don't have to upgrade all of those other parts 
uh, for this particular build. You don't need to worry about getting the Hot Racing 0.5 gears. It already comes with them. Um, it really comes down to you, you take your, your uh, C10 or your Jeep SCX24. This has the new transmission, motor plate, motor, drop that in, ESC as well. Uh, you can plug into that stock receiver and use it as your radio. And at that point, um, add the, the wheels and tires. And I would say get the longer shocks like these hot racing ones, guys. And you could be good to go. Um, ideally, I guess I would probably also get an Emacs servo. You don't need to get the motor plates and all that other stuff. Or the not the motor plate, but the... Um, the servo plate it does make it easier uh, but you can trim it and get it to fit in there for under 10 bucks the difference that that servo makes is uh, pretty amazing um, or the mofo rc black label as well uh reefs 99 micro depending on how much you want to spend guys you can you can get better and better i have the reef 99 micro in one and it's a killer servo but you know, with these micros, it all depends how much you really want that overall price to end up being that you put into one of these. Because no matter how you look at it, you're probably going to be about 300 bucks into one, 350. Um, if you can get one cheaper, that'd be great. You could also just buy some of the parts individually because uh, you know you don't need the chassis and some of the other stuff. If you're going to use a receiver you already have, just buy, they sell fully completed axles. Um, in fact, I have some right here that I just bought on uh, Horizon's website. So I just got these, get the drive shafts and shocks and you know the other stuff that you need and you're good to go uh, because you're swapping out so much of the other stuff anyway. Uh, there's lots of options, guys, that's all I'm saying. All I wanna do is tell you that this thing is fast, show you some of the footage I got of it and um, I think if you're really wanting to get into this game, whether you've got an ECB chassis, you've got the Mofo RC chassis, or you've got the Tiny Titan chassis, whatever SCX24, something you printed yourself, um, these motors, this kit is going to really give you, <laughs> give you that power that we've been looking for. Other people have found ways to do it. It's just not been easy, clean, and we're always asking, well, what did you use for this? What did you use? And we've been trying so hard to get a solution. This makes it easy to just drop in there and have some power. Um, last thing is the height of it. I think the way that it's set up, it's about, I tried using my calipers and going inside and measuring you know, the height of the, um, the actual thing i don't want to take it all the way apart but i kind of measured in here and um it's about 35 36 millimeters which means for the uh tiny titan it should just fit under because all of the stuff sits really high in here as far as the battery tray and that it's got a really tall chassis um so you've got quite a bit of room between here and here and i think it'll direct fit drop in there and just be underneath those which is really cool uh, for some of the other ones, like the, um, the ECB one, I think probably what I'll end up doing with mine is moving the electronics up into the cockpit area here in the top part, and then uh, that'll give room for that motor to, to rock forward in there. Um, I think that's probably what I will do. Uh, other option would be is to have the motor go backwards and tilt the battery plate up. That would be another option I could do. And um, yeah, I think there's definitely options there as well. And I'm not opposed to having to use zip ties and stuff <laughs> to hold um, motor or battery plates or whatever in if there aren't screw holes. Uh, same with this one. I would be looking at probably uh, tilting. What would I do? I would, yeah, I would probably look at tilting this upward, the battery tray. Um, and maybe the electronics tray slide toward the front a little bit more. So those are kind of what I'm looking at, but I th think it should get in there. You just have to get a little bit creative with it, guys. Like I said, that's part of what being in the hobby is, is and these are all custom. So that's uh, that's part of it. Until we get a full, full kit, which I, or ready to run or something like that, 
it's kind of the way it's going to be for us but this makes it easy for us to have the power that we need don't have to know what pinion to get what spur gear it's all part of the little package combo that they have just make sure you get an esc to go with it so the combo is the motor the transmission the motor plate you get the pinion and the spur gear but you have to also order an esc to go with it guys i have links in the description down below um and hopefully that'll help you get on your on your way to getting started and doing this guys anyway guys thanks for tuning in as always have fun rcing catch you next time